Hello, movers and shakers. How the hell are you? How are you guys doing today? So glad that you're here. Today, we're going to be talking about terms and conditions. I've gotten a lot of emails where I, people have asked me about contracts and so on and so forth, and I've had them send me their contracts, etc. And one thing I've noticed is if they do have terms and conditions, they don't have a way for people to sign them. And two, uh, there's a lot of things missing on your terms and conditions. So we're going to be talking about the best ways to protect yourself so that you are protected from customers that might not be on the up and up, if you will. All right, let's stay tuned for that. Hi guys, this is Jay Burnham and this is The Real Jay Burnham Show where I teach you guys how to start, run, and build your own successful movie business. All right, a little, little to do, a little work to do. Before we get started, if you're coming here to watch this video and you're not yet a subscribed member to this YouTube channel, I plead with you to do so. Just go over here to right there, right below there, right below my little finger is a red button. It says subscribe. Right next to that subscribe button is a little bell icon. Hit that bell icon and you will see that you, if you press it, you'll get notifications of whenever I post up a new video on this channel. Awesome. So let's get going. So one thing that's been happening is I've been asked, a lot of people ask me about their contracts and how do they do contracts and what contracts should look like, etc. Um, and then one thing I keep telling them is, you know, just look at what others have done, what others have doing now if you're uh, an if you're an insider to my moving company insiders group i actually have put up a copy of my contract right here a copy of my contract that i have with all my terms and conditions which right here i got all the legalese right here um you can go there and you can check my uh my contract out and download it for yourself and you can model your own contract right i think I have opened the group up. It was only going to be 24 hours, but in the in the in the vein and congratulations, or because I have been doing YouTube videos for the last six months, I decided I was going to take this next week. So next, starting Monday at 9 a.m., I will be closing the group again. So in the interim, feel free to go to my um, Moving Company Insiders group and become a member if you so desire. I will leave a link to that group in the description below. But if you go to that group, you can go and download a copy of my um, my contract, basically. Um, and on the back, there should be, and hopefully, if I've done it right, there should be a copy of my terms and conditions. So you guys should have a whole list of terms and conditions. Now, there is a guy uh, who's a subscriber to this channel. He's also uh, one of the insiders of the group. He actually has a great thing. He's got his whole terms and conditions on his website. And it, he, I've read all through 22 or 23 different points to his uh, terms and conditions. The only thing that I don't know about, and he, hopefully, Maddie, if you can, correct me on this, but um, his terms and conditions are not downloadable. Um, and that's a problem. You have to get your, per, your people to sign. You got to get your customers to sign uh, your uh, contract, uh, which has your terms and conditions on. And basically, terms and conditions are under what circumstances you will and will not do work or work it or what you will, will what you will insure, what you won't insure, etc. And you got it's got to be laid out very easy to read, very understandable, um, and so on. And if you have these terms and conditions, um, you guys can then have the customer sign the contract. When they do it, it now becomes enforceable because now it's part of the contract. And they can't say, well, we didn't know, or they, and if they violate the contract, you can take them to the court and you can just show the judge, look, they signed it. And I, my contract, I have had to take people to court, unfortunately, uh, you know, only three times. And each and every time that I've taken a customer, um, sorry about that, each and, each and every time I've taken a customer to court, I have showed them that they have signed the contract and, and highlighted the areas where it says that they violated, and it's always upheld in the court of law. So protect yourself by having a contract. Now, I've done another video on that early on, but let's go over some of the terms and conditions. First of all, Get your terms and conditions on your contract. If you don't have it on your contract or in the 
on the back, um, then have another piece of paper that they have to sign that's going to be attached to this, and have them actually sign it. Say, here's the terms and conditions, and if, have them sign it. If they won't sign the terms and conditions because they're they object to something, don't do the work because they're probably want, the reason why they're not signing is because they're about ready to. Um, they're gonna they they wanted to be able to uh, scan you basically and that's happened to me a couple times i've been in business 10 years i've learned the tricks of the trade and this contract that i come up with has been a hard fought one knowledge uh, the reason for all my terms and conditions not because i was smarter but because i got screwed on different things so i said okay i got screwed on something i i wrote up i put something in my terms and conditions got screwed on something else I put something else in in my in my terms and conditions, and I've learned through you know basically trial and error exactly what is needed and wanted, and to protect me from the customers. Because sometimes the customers are going to try to get over on you. It's a fact of life. We don't want you getting over on them, but again, we don't also don't want them getting over on us. So let's get into the terms and conditions. Now there are a couple. There are six different things that I know that people I haven't seen in on somebody's terms of conditions other than they don't get them to sign like maddie hey shout out to you maddie you're a great guy i, I saw your terms and conditions love it hopefully you'll give me written permission to actually share the, uh, your terms and conditions with others i know it's online but you know i'd rather have it in writing that you say i could share it with you he's got it great the only thing i would recommend uh, maddie on your terms and conditions is that you would actually have it downloadable where the customer has to sign so when they sign the contract, they also sign in your terms and conditions, saying that they have read and knowledge and follow your terms and conditions. All right, with the date and signed, and they get a copy and you get a copy. All right. Other than that, guys, let's go. These are some of the six things I think that every terms and conditions should have in it. However, you want to write it is up to you. I'm not. I'm just going to give you the concept. You can write it up however you want. But these things have to be. In your terms and conditions otherwise you're going to be you're going to get screwed on these very six points okay the first one is bounce checks or non-sufficient funds or whatever it is um and that's not just bounce checks but it's also if they use credit cards and they take the money back from a credit card in my on my contract i basically state if if i don't get the money that they're supposed to pay me i will sue them for three times the amount of the bill plus attorney fees all right so if it's a two thousand dollar job i'm going to charge him three times the amount that's three thousand that's six thousand dollars plus attorney fees now sometimes you can't take them to small claims court but you'll have to take them to regular civil court that's fine that means the attorney fees will just be higher um and you'll you, you know and you will win which means that they'll have to pay your attorney fees all right, so take them to court. Don't be afraid to do that if somebody fails to pay. But it's got to be if they fail to pay, whether it's through bounce checks or reversal of credit cards or whatever. They've got to pay you the full amount that you're asking for. All right, so make sure that they know that they, that's what they have to pay for. All right, so any kind of non-sufficient funds, they didn't pay in full for whatever reason, Tell them that you it's put it on the on the on the contract that you will take them to court for three times the amount. Now I don't know your your state might have like a limit, like the automatic limit of like how much you can sue for. Like in the state of Michigan, it's actually two times you can you can do it. But I put it on my contract stating three times. Once it's on the contract, that's now a term a term and condition. And I have found that if I get three times the amount, then I will make the money back that I, I've lost. Because believe it or not, you're going to lose money following up in court. Okay? So three times the amount. I recommend it. Two, damage claims. You've got to have uh, the you got to have the terms and conditions. If someone's going to file a damage claim, you've got to write it all out exactly what you need and want for them and if they don't follow the damage claim procedure as laid out in your terms and conditions they are not to get a damage claim the reason why we do this is again to protect you right it's not to not to have uh, put barriers in the way for you not to play 
pay damages when you've actually created damages, but to make sure that you're not going to get scammed and your insurance company's not going to get scammed by somebody, you know, who is, let's say they've got an $1,800 antique table. There's a little bit of a scratch. We all know that a little bit of a scratch is something that could be taken, taken care of for like a, a couple hundred dollars. And, you know, they don't need to take, they don't need to buff off the entire table and re-varnish it all. And, you know, things. And some people will try to do that. And if it's a company that's, do, you know, if they hired somebody to do it and they know that it's for a debt, an insurance claim, they're going to they're gonna try to squeeze out the most amount of money because they want your insurance to, to pay for their stuff. So they're going to say, oh, it's going to need this, 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 this. When we, we both know it, it's done. So make sure that you put in your how the damage claims are to be done the exact procedure so that you're protecting themselves. So they, they have no excuses. They can't go and just have some guy willy nilly do damage claims. All right. Three, and I've already talked about it on number one, but they've got to pay in full before they pay. You pay for any damages, any damage. If someone's going to do a damage claim, they must pay their bill in full before you will even consider doing any kind of damage claim. Now, it's going to happen. You're going to damage something, and um, they're going to say, well, I'm not going to pay you because you damaged it. You, and then you just politely, confidently, and very low-key let them know. That's fine. If you refuse to pay the full amount, there will be no damage claim, and your stuff will not get repaired. Okay? And that way, if, you're, if you put that, and it's in the terms and conditions, it's on your contract, then, you know, things start shifting. Then they go, because oh, what they're trying to do is scan you, right? And then all of a sudden, now they're paying you. Because now if, it, if something is really damaged and they really want to get it fixed, they will pay you in full for it, right? And if somebody is just insistent, then you're like, well, there's nothing I can do. And they go, well, that's not the law, blah, blah, blah. It might not be the law, but it is in, the, it is in my, my terms and conditions. And just because it's not the law, if they've signed it as part of the terms and conditions, they're screwed because that's the term they agreed to do that. So make sure you do not pay any kind of damages if they're not paid in full. That includes if they bounce the check or uh, cancel the check or cancel the, the credit card. They, there is no damage claims. And if they do, if they if you do handle the damage claims and they still bounce the checks, you go and you sue them for the three times the amount. See how that works? So make sure you're doing that. All right, another thing that I see that people fail to put on their terms and conditions is uninsured items. You do not want to insure things that are easily easily broken or damaged, like press board uh, furniture, anything that you can buy from Ikea. If it comes in a box, don't insure it. It, it came in a box for a reason. It came in a box because that was the only way to protect it. It didn't come fully assembled. There's a reason why it didn't come fully assembled. So anything that's press board or, you know, a bunch of basically wood chips glued together, you don't insure it because it doesn't travel well. It gets, it's easily damaged. Um, another, other things are um, washers and dryers. Those are easily damaged, especially if you have to take them through narrow passageways and you have to take doors off and, and like in case of refrigerators or even doors into rooms. Things are easily damaged on that. So put it in your terms and conditions. Look, you know, this stuff is easy. We'll do what we can, but if it gets damaged, we're not assuming responsibility for it. We're, you know, we're just not going to do it because if you're telling us to take a 30-inch washer through a 29-inch door, your, your thing's going to get damaged. It, it's just the way it is. So we're not going to, we're not going to cover it. We'll do it, but it's going to get damaged and you're going to have to live with it kind of thing. So anything that's uninsured, anything that you're not going to insure, make sure that that's in your terms of in conditions, okay? Um, some of you who are just starting out really don't know this. Some of you, some of us who've been around, we know what it, what is going on. Um, we already talked about it here, you know, damage claims, but your uninsured items, you know, we're not going to, you want to make sure that you're putting your insurance terms down for it. And what I mean by that, it's not just, not the what you will insure and what you weren't insure, but how much you're going to insure for. Like if you damage a, your 
you put a nick in a wall, you're only going to insure up to so much for that particular damage. I wouldn't. I would put in my terms and conditions no more than fifty to hundred dollars for anything that happens to a, a nick in a wall or something like that. You also want to make sure that you know, it, like tight doorways and stuff. You know, it's stuff's going to get nicked or it could get marred. You know, we ha we'll take some paint and paint up over that for you, but we're not going to go and repaint the entire wall. Sorry, that's just not how it's this works. You know what I mean? I mean, you, you lived in the house. I'm sure there's a lot more damage than a couple of little mar, mars or nicks that we might have put on the wall that you that's done, especially if they have kids. So don't don't play the the the, the victim here and, and then go and pay for their entire wall. All right. So make sure you put in how much you're going to insure for. That includes if you're going to insure uh, 60 cents per pound per item or you're going to insure more than that. And what are those terms for? Right? Is it going to be by declared value or is it going to be by uh, by weight? And then based on if you got a tariff, you know, you can put those in, in the tariff. Well, we're this is how much we're going to insure by, based for declared value or here's what we're how much we're going to share for uh, um, weight value. So on. So make sure you're putting your insurance terms, well, how much and up to and what you're going to limit. Because um, you want to limit how much you're going to pay out. You want to fix the stuff, but you also want to limit how much you're going to fix or stuff. Because you don't want to be overpaying because you know because you don't want people to take advantage of it, like paying for an entire wall when you just put a small little dent in it. And it takes like five dollars a putty, bloop, bloop, a little bit of a sanding job and some you know paint, which you can go and get. Hey, match paint. You can go to any paint store now and match paint, even if it's been faded. You can take a clip of paint and say, hey, this is what I need, and they will give you the exact thing. So it won't even look. If it's the paint's faded, it'll blend right in. They won't even know. All right? So make sure you put the insurance terms. Um, lastly, another thing that you definitely have to have in your, your terms and conditions, um, which I don't see in anybody's. Maddie, I haven't even seen this in yours. Uh, I actually, I'll take that back. I did see something of it, but it was a little bit incomplete. Basically, you got to tell the customer that you will not connect or disconnect any gas, electric, or water lines or anything that is hard um, nailed into a, the wall. You are not mechanics, you're not electricians, and you're not plumbers. Do not do any of that. And if you do, it's simply a courtesy, and you are released from any liability if damage were to occur. You don't want to disconnect gas lines because if you disconnect it wrong and something blows up, you don't want to be held reliable. Hey, I told you that I, we don't do it. I did it as a courtesy. You know, that's on you. Um, you should have had a, a professional come in and do it. Same thing with the water lines. Water lines, like, uh, refrigerators and washers and a lot of things now have water lines connected to them and pumping water in you do not want to be in charge because you don't know how rusty the pipes are or whatever is that that connection and you, you just pull it on just ever so thing can disconnect and on a water leakage could happen and electricity you know just for your own safety don't unplug if you're just if it's just unplugging a cord fine you can do that but you don't you're not going to disconnect any electric lines all right, you know, like sometimes people hardwire their TVs in into the wall. You know, um, no, you're not going to clip them. You're not going to dismantle them. You know, you can uh, again unscrew it if they if it's if it's able to be unscrewed. But I've seen TVs where you can't unscrew it, so it, it's there. It's like, sorry, nothing I can do about it. I'm not moving it. All right, now you could tell them verbally, but. That is not as good as having it in writing. So make sure your terms and conditions are in writing. Yes, you can tell them, well, look, I told them that it, this verbally, and they agree to it, blah, blah, blah. But then there's no proof. And when you get into the court of law, even though it's a verbal agreement and you told them verbally, it's a matter of he said, she said. And you know what? The judge is going to kind of like, eh, yeah, well, you should have had it in writing. So put your terms and conditions in writing. Make sure that your customer signs them. You have a copy of the signed terms and conditions, and your customer has a copy of the terms and conditions. 
and make sure that you follow the terms and conditions as well as your customer follows them. Because if you don't follow your own terms and condition, it negates it as well. So you got to also make sure that you're uh, doing it. Another couple of things I like that Matty put on his terms and condition, he limits his jobs to 12 hours. So if it's a large day, if it's going to be more than 12 hours, he cuts the clock off. They go home. They'll come back another day and finish up the job. But that's it. Done. They're not doing any more. I kind of like that because I know I've had days when it's like, it's been hard fun. We've had to get it, and it's been like 20-hour days, 16, 18, 20-hour days. I've had them. Um, so I like the idea that he, he limits himself. I wouldn't necessarily do 12, maybe 14 hours, um, you know, but – Still, it's only two. 14 is only two hours more than 12, but still you can get a lot done in 14 hours. Um, I definitely like that. Um, if Maddie allows me to publish his terms and conditions, I will see about turning his terms and conditions and, with my additions on it and turn it into a PDF file for you, which you guys can download if that's what you like. If that's what you like, leave me a comment below. Say, yes, give us a PDF of terms and conditions. And I'll make sure that I do so, and I'll get that down. You guys can go and download that. Especially, and if you're in my group and I do a PDF of that, um, you will be able to get it free. If you're not in my group, um, I, I will have a link that you guys can go to. I will put a link into the description once I have it, and you can go and download it. It will still be free, um, but you will have to give me your name and email address to get it. Okay? Fair enough? All right, guys. If you like this video, if this is giving you some good information, give me a thumbs up. Yay! It helps the channel expand if uh, you guys do that. If you share it with your family and friends, it helps my channel. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate you guys, each and every one of you. God bless. Have a great day. Bye-bye.